In my last video, we looked at pulling the standard GA4 landing page dimension into Looker Studio. We also looked at it in GA4. That dimension is session scoped, which means it tells you the landing page for a given session. In this video, we're going to create a user scope landing page dimension that I call first user landing page. This is really helpful for understanding content on your website that attracts new users, new visitors to your site. So a perfect example of this is when you're creating SEO content, informational SEO content to get sort of higher funnel searchers, people that are like researching something related to your products or services. So to create this dimension, we're going to do a lot of it in, in Tag Manager. We're going to start by creating a custom JavaScript tag that sets a cookie and actually persists the value of that first landing page. Then we're going to create a custom variable that grabs the value from that cookie. And we're going to use that variable in the configuration tag to set a user property for the first user landing page. Then we're going to create a custom dimension in GA4 that grabs that value so we can then report on it in GA4 and then pull it into Looker Studio for reporting. The last thing I walk through, you may or may not, not decide to do, which is that a limitation of custom dimensions in GA4 is that they can't be more than 36 characters. And I found with my site that a number of my landing page paths were more than 36 characters. And to overcome that limitation, what I did is in Looker Studio, I created a lookup table in a Google Sheet. And then I joined that lookup table to my GA4 data set to be able to see the full landing page path. So again, you might decide that part is overkill for your circumstance or unnecessary, but I wanted to see how to do it. It's kind of a cool, cool tactic. So let's get started. Okay, we're in my Tag Manager account. I have created the tag and the variable that I'm going to be using, but I'll walk you through each of the steps. So here's the tag that gets the landing page value and pushes it out to a cookie. Make this a little bit bigger. All right, so let's, let's just have a look at this code. So this function here, what this does is just gets cookies. It's a generic function. You could use this to get other types of cookies takes the name of a cookie as an argument and then returns the uh, cookie. Down here is where the fun happens. So the first thing it does is it tries to get a cookie called LP underscore path and sets the value of URL cookie to that. I also set an expiration for a cookie in case I need to create one. And this is just building that string. So then down here, what I do is if the value of URL cookie is null, meaning that it tried to get a cookie and it didn't find one, then it's going to do this. Otherwise, it's going to do uh, this, this block that, that happens in the else part of the code. So here, what it does, if it doesn't find a cookie, is it grabs the page path and it pushes it out to the data layer as a variable named LP path, and it also pushes it out to a cookie. I used page path because of that 36 character limit on user properties. I would have liked to use the full URL, but if I do that, then every time I set this variable, it's going to use a lot of characters for the domain and the HTTP uh, and slash slash and all that. Really, we mostly want the path for the lookup we're going to create to, to work well. We really want as many characters as we can get for the path. That's why I'm using path instead of the full URL. If it does find a cookie, so meaning this script has already run previously for a given user, remembering that cookies are always set to a user. In this case, the else statement happens if a cookie already exists and it'll get the value of that page path from the cookie and it will push that out to the data layer, meaning it only really, it only creates that cookie the first time. And then from then on, it's going to grab the value and push it out to the data layer. From there, and again, I'll share this code in the blog post. From there, we create this variable DLV uh, LP path. And what, so you can create a variable in Tag Manager and give it, just say, I want to grab the value of this data layer var variable. 
So that's what we're doing here is the previous script pushes the value out to the data layer. This is where we collect it. Then next step, we go down to my GA4 configuration tag. You'll see that I've created this first user landing page property and I set the value to that variable that I just created that gets the data layer LP path variable. So sort of complicated. You may wonder, you can create variables in Tag Manager that, that pull up, get a value directly from a cookie. And I tried doing that. I found it was a little less reliable than when I did it using the data layer. One other thing I'll point out is that the, the sequence that these tags execute in really matters. So if you think about the GA4 configuration tag, properties and parameters that are set in the configuration tag will be inherited by other GA4 events that you set up in Tag Manager. So think about if that custom JavaScript tag that we created executed simultaneously with or after this tag, well then the value of this variable won't exist when this tag executes. So what I did in my case is I changed the configuration tag to execute on DOM ready, the custom HTML tag that has JavaScript in it. The trigger for that is the page view trigger, which happens before DOM ready. I tested it out. This does work by the time this tag executes, the value exists in the data layer, but that's just something you're going to want to think about. And I'll just caution you that if you do it the way that I did it, and you have other tags, J4 tags in Tag Manager. It, let's just have a look at our op options for triggers here. So we have page view, DOM ready, and window loaded. And these happen in sequence. So page view happens first, DOM ready second, window loaded last. So if you have other tags set up in Tag Manager and those are going on the page view trigger, and you switch your GA4 configuration tag to go on DOM ready, you better change your other tags. Um, so, because that sequencing really matters. Okay, um, this has been published. So now let's pop over to our GA4 account. In GA4, we're gonna go to custom definitions. And I've got this first user landing page here. So let's have a look at this. Just a little bigger. So I've already created this. The scope is user. The dimension name, first user landing page, grabs the value of the user property. So this is how custom dimensions and metrics work in GA4 is they're going, what you do is you pass the value from a event parameter or user property to the dimension. So if you're doing an event scoped dimension or metric, then it's going to get the value of the event parameter. If you're creating a user scope dimension, then it's going to get the value from a user property. And you can see I can't even change this. I can only pull in a user property here. Now let's have a look at what this does in Looker Studio. Uh, first, let's just go ahead and, and pop in a table and have a look at this. So I did go and refresh my data source just quickly show you how that goes if we go to the data source itself i can refresh fields and it'll check the connection see if anything new exists i've already done that So I'll show you how I did that. And then it had, I just pulled in these metrics. So that's, this is what's cool. If you struggled with this, now I have a dimension that I can just add metrics to. The way I got that dimension is with a blend. So let's have a look at this blend. So what I'm doing is I'm taking GA4 and I'm blending it with a data source that comes from a Google Sheet. And what the Google Sheet does, and this is annoying, you're, you may be reaching this point and you're like, oh, this, is, this is too much. Oh, wow. This process is a little complicated. Once you've done it, it works. But some of you may be like, I, I don't care that much about landing page. Uh, I get it. But I just, I really didn't like how the landing pages were truncated at 36 characters. So what I did is I just created this Google Sheet that had... 36 character landing page, and then the full landing page path. 
And so just as a lookup, and I'll show you the blend in a second to see how that works. All this does is I use the left, which is a formula in Google Sheets, and grab the first 36 characters, and then I look up the full path. Now, you may be thinking, well, that isn't perfect because it is possible that I have two different pages that have the same first 36 characters. Valid point. This is the best I could come up with. If you could convince Google to let uh, user properties be longer than 36 characters, that would be the very best solution. But until then, this is what I got to work. So this table, I added that as a data source in Looker Studio, and then I created a blend where I'm joining on the first user landing page dimension to that truncated landing page value. It's pulling in the full landing page, I added the, the metrics that I needed to the left side of the blend. This is a left outer join, which means that it'll get all the values from the left table and it'll pull in values from the right table when they're available. So in cases where there isn't a row that matches in the Google Sheet, uh, it would actually just generate a null value. All right, so let's go back to the table. Here are all the values. Pretty cool. Um, the last thing I want to point out is that Google cautions against creating custom dimensions that have too many values. So if we go here and we want to create a custom dimension, see this scary warning at the top. With a, so creating a custom dimension with a high number of unique values may negatively impact your reports. You can read, so learn more about best practices. That takes you to, to this page here. And the they use the word cardinality, which is many values uh, for custom dimensions. And what high cardinality means is really more than 500. What'll happen is that it'll start grouping values great, like when there are more than 500, it'll show you 500, and then it'll group the rest into other. Cardinality doesn't just affect custom dimensions, the dimension we created, for example. It also affects any dimension in GA4. So this isn't really a problem that's specific to the first user landing page dimension. It would also affect the standard landing page dimension. It just happens that landing page is a dimension that could easily get above 500 values on a site like an e-commerce site, for example. If this is a concerning limitation for you, a couple things to know. Because explorations actually report on event level data, they don't get impacted by cardinality, nor does data in BigQuery. So if you've set up a, an export to BigQuery, either one of those explorations or, or BigQuery data are a way to get past that cardinality limitation. So that's it. That's the first user landing page. And uh, we'd love to hear in the comments anything, you know, if you're, you find it useful, uh, let me know if you run into any challenges. And thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Please click the like, like button if you found this helpful. And check out 2octobers.com for more videos. And we also help organizations with GA4 setups, Looker Studio, Tag Manager, really anything analytics related. And we do uh, bespoke training as well. So thanks again for watching.